Many colorists believe that in DaVinci Resolve, in order to be a professional, you need to have very complex note trees. Let me show you in this video how you can do very professional color grading with just four notes. Because when you understand how things are done, you can strive for simplicity, and that will give you better and faster results. Let me show you. And before we start, let me say this. This is not a competition who can use the least amount of notes. Of course not. The point here is that simplicity just gives you better and faster results. I'll even give you a few examples where I actually use more than four notes. And if you're smart, you might realize that I'm not actually using only four notes, even when I'm using only four notes. But more about that later. And this video is supported by me. I'll be showing you a product of mine in this video, as that is the way you can support me making these videos on YouTube. But even if you're not interested in my offer, you will learn a few very advanced techniques in this video that you can start using in DaVinci Resolve right away. The workflow that I use with these four nodes is a node-based ACES columnist workflow. And let me show you these nodes, the four nodes. The first one is an IDT, Input Device Transform node, the second one is a color correction node. Then we have a look modification transform node. And the last one is an ODT output device transform node. And two of these nodes are used to do the color management. And two of the nodes are used for modify the colors. The first two nodes are used on individual clips. And then the last two nodes are used to all of the clips simultaneously. And this is a very fast way of working as well. Let me show you this in action. Here I have some clips for grading and from this link icon, this green icon here, you can see that they are forming a group. They are all in the same group. And when we create a group of clips, we can modify individual clips in the clip tab and all of the clips in the group post clip tab. As you can see, all the clips turn grade with this one node. So this is a very fast way of working. Individual clips on the clip level, whole group on the group post level. And then I'll add the first node. This is the IDT input device transform node. This is where we transform our footage from the capture profile into ACES. And this node is, this node is located in the clip level, as you often, often use many different cameras in your edits. So we need to set the first node separately for each clip, depending on the camera that was used. This footage is shot on Arri Alexa, but even if you shoot on with an iPhone, the process is the same. So to transform this to ACES, I most often use the color space transform effect. And I set the input to Arri wide gamut and log C, and then the output to ACES AB1 and ACES CCT. The next I'm going to add the fourth node, the last node. This is the output device transform. And I'll go to the group post clip tab and add the color space transform node here. And this is the last node, and with this we transform our footage from ACES to our delivery color space, in this case rec 9 a for standard dynamic range delivery. And when we have this node as the last node, we can deliver HDR as easily, without needing to change our grade. But I'll talk about HDR in a future video, so subscribe for that. Then we go back to the clip level, and this node is for color correction, and we add it in the clip tab, because color correction is clip separate, like uh, depending on the clip. If you have a different white balances, different exposures uh, among your clips, then it makes sense to adjust the color correction for each clip individually. And the way I like to do color correction is to do photographically accurate color correction as much as possible. And this means that when I'm adjusting the exposure and the white balance, I'm trying to uh, mimic how it would look if I would actually go back in time and change the settings in the actual camera. So this is very similar on how you color correct raw video footage. And this workflow is you can do the same thing even if your camera doesn't shoot raw video. And to do photo accurate color correction, you need to use color space aware tools. For example, the HDR global wheel. And in my color management settings, I have my timeline color space set to ACCCT, the same we use in the first node. And now the HDR wheels will work like raw. And this is important that our footage is in ACES and the timeline color space is in the same color space. And then our color space aware tools know how to do, deal with the footage. And now the global wheels work like raw. It's very accurate. And we can change the white balance and exposure with the same tool very easily. Here is an example of a drastic exposure change. And you can see how accurately it works. The contrast is clear from the shadow to highlight and 
and then changing the white balance is as easy. This is this is like this really helps uh, with your color correction. When you do things this kind of photo photographically accurate way, it just makes things much easier. And if I need or if I want, I can, for example, add a bit of contrast in the same node, or I could as well lower the contrast to give an image a bit softer look. So this is where you can do a bit of your non-photographically accurate color corrections as well. Then the third node, in this case the last node, and we will add this into the group post clip tab before the ODT node. And the last node is called a look modification transform node. And I have a library of these ready for use. So in the gallery, I drag and drop one of them into the signal path. This one is a very accurate film emulation for the Vision 3 500T film stock. And now your grade is done. All the clips could look good as long as you have your IDT set correctly and you have done your color correction photo accurately, at least to a degree. But before I show you how this one node works, let me tell you a few examples where I personally would use more than four nodes. For example, I might use a fifth node if I want to relight the scene. For example, in this case, I want to bring her, bring a bit more light to her face to draw more attention to her. First, I create a power grade, then I track it. I'll turn the grade off for faster tracking, that's a tip. And then I use the HSL secondaries to target the relight only to the light areas of her face, so avoiding the shadows, just like real light would. And then I use a healthy dose of denoise to blur the edges, and then I'll add one stop of photo-accurate exposure to her face. Now she stands out much better. Another technique that I often like to use is called local tone mapping, and with this technique you can sculpt the exposure levels in your footage in post. Let me show you. In this case, the lights in the background are quite hot, these neon lights. So I'll create an HSL secondary and mask only targeting those areas. And again, with a lot of denoise to blur the edges. And then I'll bring the lights down with this uh, gain wheel in this case. And here you can see how big of a difference these two extra nodes did in this case. But depending on your footage, you often don't need these two extra nodes. So let's go back to the third node, the look modification transform. Let me show you how this works. This one node creates a look for our footage. And the idea is that when I have my color, color management set up correctly and I have done my color correction photo accurately, I only need this one node to create the look. This emulates how your footage would look if you would have shot uh, your footage with an Vision 3 500T film stock. And this same emulation works for Ari Alexa clips or clips shot with an iPhone, as long as you do your uh, color management and your color correction properly. And here you can see how this node modifies the color, the tone and the contrast of the footage. Then it adds this realistic grain effect. And this adds physically realistic halation effect to the highlights. And this adds realistic diffusion that reduces the sharp digital look uh, from your clips. And just look how nicely this node cleans out the highlight color artifacts that often neon lights create. Plus, it adds such a nice glow to the highlight as well. And I have many, made many other look modification transform nodes as well. This one, for example, gives a modern filmic look to Eclipse. This one is, for example, is a black and white film stock emulation for the double X film stock. I guess that's the most popular black and white film stock. And just for comparison, here's another black and white look, look modification transform. And there are many more like this. This collection is called Aces Light Look Library, and it's a product of mine of high quality look modification transforms. I'll tell you more about that later. But I want to emphasize something that this is a very different way of working that is currently quite popular. So um, nowadays we often on YouTube, we see this kind of like endless tweaking. We tweak every individual clip, but this is more, this way of working in that we do in this video is more similar to how we work with analog film. In analog film, the chosen stock footage, I mean the chosen stock film stock uh, dictates the look. In this workflow that we do here, the look modification transform dictates a lot of the look. Uh, this tweaking things endlessly is a modern and rather lousy way of working. Uh, instead, I like to create a group of clips with the look modification transforms all at once. It's more uh, similar to like working with analog uh, look. And these look modification transforms, they give you a final look, so you don't need to tweak anything. But you still have full control. You can modify all and everything in these looks. And remember, in the beginning, I said that when I use only four nodes, I might not be only using four nodes. 
So <clears throat> this one node is actually a compound node. And when you look inside it, you can see a group of nodes hidden in it. And before you rage at me in the comments, uh, even though this is a group of nodes, I can consider it really as one node. Uh, this node works without you ever needing to know what is inside it, so you can consider it as a, just one node. But if you want, you can modify each and all of the effects and transform this node however you like, so you have all the power. For example, you might want to make the halation effect stronger. Just open the halation node and choose a stronger halation. Or maybe you'd like to lower the diffusion effect, so turn it off or just lower the gain to half. Or you might want to uh, add a more noticeable grain. Then you can change the grain from 35 millimeter to 60 millimeter, for example. Or maybe you just don't want any grain at all. Or you might want to warm up your look a bit. Turn on the warm node or the cool node for a cooler look. And if you want to do some additional edits to the look, for example, lower the saturation or add a bit of contrast, you can do it in the main node. Or maybe you just want to more natural look for your video. Just turn the whole node to half strength with the gain. So you can see how versatile this one node can be. And even if you're not interested in my collection of look modification transforms, this is a still a very viable way of working. So do your grade in one compound node and save it for later, so creating your own library of looks. This is a much better way of working because then you don't need to invent the wheel every time you start grading. Just use your own work, like get more out of your own work. So you can co concentrate on making a really banger look and then compile it as a look modification transform and save it for later use. And there is one more trick that I want to show you. Because nothing prevents us from using more than four nodes, as I said earlier, let's try to add another look modification transform after the first one. And the idea with look modification transforms is that it doesn't change the color space that you use it in. So if you use your color, color Color modification transform in ACES, it keeps the footage in ACES. So now we can add another one. Let's add the see the modern look. And just look how nice this looks in this case. When you start compiling this together, it's always a bit of a risk how it looks, because it's such a strong look. But in this case, it just looks great. But we don't need to stop there, because one of the look modification transform nodes that I have in this collection is called an analog artifacts. And when I add this to the signal path, nothing happens first. But when I look inside it, I can see multiple nodes that I can turn on to add some analog kind of effects to the clips. So let's add film breath for filmic exposure flicker, vignette for darker edges, scan dust that look like dust would have ended up in your scanner, and chromatic aberration. This makes your footage look like it was shot on a vintage lens. Lens reflections. This look, look like the light is bouncing inside lens as with all the lenses. Edge blur, this adds a realistic out of focus effect to the edges of your frame, another touch of vintage lenses. And then film frame, and this adds textured frame to the clip like analog film negative. And that the film strip, this one makes the footage look like a strip of film. And film perfs, this adds these film holes, aka, aka perfs to the uh, side. And then gate weave, this makes the whole frame shake like real film. And here's the end result. Done with four nodes. Well, actually, not four nodes. A bit more than four nodes. So if you want to learn more about my look library, here's a link somewhere floating around me. And there's a limited time offer going on for it right now. So the price should not scare you off. And or then you can watch this video instead if you're interested. And see you in the next video.